let me do that. So I'm going to do a timer. How about 10 minutes for each of us? Okay. Does that sound good? Yeah. Good. Let me just do that. So find my timer. We'll do 10 minutes. Okay. Right. Okay, so I am currently on my sabbatical this May of 2018. And I really realized how much I really, really needed this because I've been kind of in this limbo-ish time of, um, you know, just taking care of clients, not necessarily always worrying as much as I did about money, but a few times and, and just go back and forth with some things too. And, I'm, and I also realized too, um, you know, a few weeks ago before, I, while I was planning this sabbatical, that I needed this to recharge to actually dig deeper for like the things that I was going to do for myself and the things that I was going to do with Rita, because even some of my best clients, um, and just some meetings with some of my best clients, just some things just didn't started not resonating as much. They still resonate really well with me, but there are some activities that are still in that old paradigm. And I started realizing that a few weeks ago where, um, you know, just a few things that are still in and lingering in that, in that success and um, achievement paradigm where, where you also have these sales pages and where there are, um, you know, you find the person's pain and then you, you find the solution for them and you find what works for you. So it's very formulaic. So I found myself still doing those things with even clients that I loved um, and I still love, but it's just, it really reinforced to me now that I'm on this other trip that, but this is an opportunity for me to really unplug and, um, you know, do tasks, but not do anything forward momentum for folks, which is really good for me. And it gives them a break too, but it's also for me to kind of really hone in on, you know, what, watching videos that Reed and I have done. Um, really doing writing every day when I'm on the road. I've been taking the sabbatical and I'm traveling to Colorado um, and sort of serendipitously, like perhaps Arkansas, perhaps Texas. I'm not sure yet. So it's, um, it's kind of serendipitous on this road, on this sabbatical, this road trip. This is the first phase of this month long sabbatical where I'm um, just kind of like going and hitting on the road and I'm actually packed my tarot cards and my, my Oracle cards. So I'm kind of trying out this um, intuition on wheels where I'm just putting up cards on my Facebook thing and just sort of saying, I'm in this city and here's my reading. So it's very calm. It's very, it's a nice little touch and it's a nice little, um, way of me getting in touch with it first rather than having to like be outward with that with everyone else to try and like get readings and I'm, I'm actually giving free ones too while I'm on the road which has been fun it just gets me out of this space so it's it's this is an unplugging time this is a very giving time this is a um, see what the universe is going to hand Scott on the road time um, you know I do know that I'm I'm going to Des Moines um, for a convention, I'm going to see Rita. I'm, I'm still not sure exactly the whole timelines of everything, but that's okay. And um, I know as long as I give Rita a few days notice, I'm probably fine. And um, yeah, it, it's it's been so great, just this feeling of spring. Spring is coming forward finally, even Minnesota with the snow. Um, but I just find that I needed this because my long-term sustainability is going to, to really hinge on me creating things that are in this authentic space, you know, and, and finding the team of folks who are totally in that authentic space. And right now I'm kind of feeling like I'm sort of really walking between the worlds, um, which is still okay. And I love that. But I do realize that the going forward long term, that the most, my most sustainable path as an entrepreneur is to be really true to myself and to foster those things for myself. If I can show up for me, then I can show up for them. And I can't necessarily always 
teach somebody how to be authentic, but if I step into it and put that out to the universe and keep showing up for the universe, then people will come along as they see that. So how can I be of a, a light to this new, new paradigm if I'm not really in that myself and just sort of showing this quiet warrior type of person that I want to be? So, and that's kind of the newest thing is that idea of like this quiet warrior, love warrior, um, meditative inward journey that is the most important thing right now. And it's, it's something that people can tap into. And, I, and I'm just, I want to see what the sabbatical brings because it's a little play time with the universe and what things are coming to me and who I meet along the way. And, um, you know, what the readings come about as, um, the videos that I put out, the internet connections that are spotty or not, and um, this is I've never seen. So, so needed for me. And, um, you know, first couple of days I was disappointed in how I kind of let myself slip back into the old paradigm. But now I'm, I'm like, okay, this is all coming along. There's a tether there. People are still there. Um, I need to allow them to be there, but also just kind of like also move into this space too. And if they see me in this space, that will rub off and I don't have to teach them. I don't have to teach them to come to the space if I'm already there. So um, I just have to show up and I just have to be present and I have to put that first again. So many times I kind of slip back and I don't let those things be first, but this trip, the sabbatical, this month of May, um, I'm still sustaining myself with like consistent edits and maintenance with clients, but no new stuff. And it's been great so far. It's great. And I'm like looking forward to that whole, whole idea of just this creation time. That's going to carry me forward, carry Rita forward with some things too, as she comes along and see what happens because I haven't fully quit yet. And that's probably like the real, biggest realization of like this I quit mentality and letting the universe take control is that I haven't fully quit yet. And this is part of it. And this is a big, huge, awesome step to get into that I quit space that Rita talks about so eloquently. Um, <clears throat> so the conference, the, um, the Demicon conference is coming up tomorrow. I'm leaving for Des Moines. And I'm excited because I get to see my friends that I haven't seen for a year that go to this science fiction convention. It's a nice little relaxing spot um, where I can kind of just be amongst science fiction fans and geeky people and people of all walks of life and um, and just sort of like be free. And also just I practiced last year, I, I practiced this whole idea of allowing people to be imperfect because there's so many ideas and politics the way it is it always enters the conversation and i allow myself to be imperfect i allow other people to be imperfect if i i don't have to be crazily angry at a panelist for not letting a woman speak like i did last year because that's just who they are right now and i'm letting it's a, it's a fun exercise and like just letting folks be who they are and for me letting go and that's what I kind of treat this as. And that was last year's lesson that I learned. And um, yeah, and, and it'll be fun. I, I might be meeting up with a friend from Council Bluffs who might be coming over, but I'm not sure if he'll have time to drive the two hours from Council Bluffs to Des Moines, but hopefully, maybe, who knows? So leaving that possibility open and maybe some possibilities to meet with um, a friend or I'll possibly see my, my Aunt Alice who is in assisted living right now in Des Moines too, just as a quick visit. Haven't seen her for years since my grandmother died. So yeah, it's a little bit of a bucket list trip of possibilities, but but I kind of like that. And um, I don't know when the next time I might be able to do this, but maybe I'll plan this as something I'll do every year. Um, this intuition on wheels, if it takes off, I don't know. We'll see. And um, but I'm just excited to kind of start this whole journey. And I brought books along. I brought tarot cards along and oracle cards along. My phone, 
changes of clothes, my cooler. So everything is in the back is packed and it makes me realize that, okay, I need a tent at some time down the road if I want to do this again. So, um, yeah, it's like a little practice run. I'm putting together my list for the next time, I guess. But at the same time, I have to stay in the present. But um, it'll be fun to see Rita um, when I drive out there. That's the long leg of the trip. And then if I go to Texas after that, that's another long leg. But we'll see how that goes. Oh, fun. All right. Fun. Ooh, you sure you're only quitting for a month? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll start with a month. <laughs> then we'll do the lifetime. <laughs> uh, I hope so. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you want a supercharge? For a supercharge? How much time do you want? Three minutes? Two minutes? Um, I don't know. I think we need at least four. Four? All right. Mm -hmm. Got it. There you are. Begin. The so, Scott went on his uh, I Quit tour. And it, yeah, intuition on wheels. But first it had to be the I Quit tour. <laughs> and that, just that, just that title made people interested. Well, I want to go on an I Quit tour too. And that, um, yeah, just going, first of all, going to the, the convention was, um, it, it just made you realize how many people out there you could reach and how many people are right for quitting this way, this constructed society, rules, conditioning, all of that. How many people are just done and they don't even realize it until somebody says, I quit. And you just found yourself surrounded by people like this. And um, you realize that this tour could go on for months if you want it to. So you, by the end of the month, you were, you were coming back to your apartment and planning the next one, which your, your lease was going to be up in a few months anyway. So you were, you were planning the next one. And wh well, while you're on the, the trip, you were finding places that you were going to go and, and suggestions of expanding further. And um, that move to um, Cedar Rapids just turned into a, an eventuality. You put, put what you didn't need in storage and took off because you were able to find the perfect little camper and it's summer and it, um, yeah, Council Bluffs will be there or Cedar Rapids will be there um, when, when you need to, you know, s become more, more settled. And it may, be not, may not be until next year. You maybe you'll just head south for the winter in your camper. And um, just, just get a year of break from the snow. And because you quit snow too. <laughs> <laughs> and you were just quitting things right and left that you that didn't resonate with you anymore something you went every time you went uh oh, oh i quit it was just it was just that feeling of oh and that was it you realized well i don't actually have to do this and this and this. there were just long lists of things that we don't actually have to do and so there was no teaching. All you had to do was tell people all the things that you quit because they were curious. So what's the I quit tour? And um, you, 
yeah, you met up with the friends that you already knew, but but also added new friends along the way. You came here, fortunately, after the wind had stopped, and we just we just created for days, and and uh, we haven't stopped since. Mmm. Nice. <clears throat> Yeah. I like that. The I Quit Tour. So that's what it will be. <laughs> yeah, I think that'd be great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Are you ready for yours? Oh, I guess so. We're doing really good. Just like throwing this out there and, and getting to business. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so far. We'll see. <laughs> okay. Are you ready? Yep. Begin. All right, so I've spent a few weeks getting ready for this convention in Steamboat, and um, there was there was first there was a steady stream of people wanting circles, and then there was a little lull, and then one of them got damaged, and I put in a claim for the the price being the price of that it's the circles we're going to. And um, so it turned out that the next circle I made was going to be at that higher price. And um, that same day that I put in that claim, I found this, um, well, I actually refound this text about, well, it was, it's a um, book that was channeled by a spirit, someone who had passed and channeled to someone to tell you what goes on after, after you pass, if you're in a certain condition. And I came across this, this chapter where people who have been um, really uh, abused and oppressed on earth go to this place of rest and rejuvenation and the first time I had read it years ago, and this kind of, I didn't um, take note of this, but one of the things that happens in this, this arena for people to heal is that the, the leader of this whole ceremony um, creates these circles, these circles of color and he like taps them and they dissipate and make a sound and create like a mist of color. So it's color, sound, and then aromas that come out of these colorful circles. And I, you know, it's cool. I mean, it sounded like he was describing this one right here. And, um, so in that like lull of people wanting the circles, I was going, I was thinking, okay, well, what do I, what do I do to get this out to people? And how, how do I know that it's really helping them? And, and how do I explain? And this like just showed up in front of me that, that there's something in circles that are healing and from that other realm. And once that really sank into me, the next person contacted me for, their, for another circle and then another and another. And after that, it just became natural to occasionally tell people about it and Back then I was still kind of um, searching for words when I would tell someone who hadn't seen them yet. It, it felt kind of weird and new agey and, and I still didn't exactly know what to call them so that people would just, so it would just, you know, bring up an image. So something concrete for people to understand what I was talking about. And um, after I read that passage, the, the correct 
wording came to me. It, it became just really solid in me so that I could just tell people about it and, and explain what, what, what would resonate with them. And I could tell who actually probably needed one. And um, I had this meeting with a woman in town and it was, it was really, uh, it was enjoyable. And she's way farther along than I ever expected as far as being open. Um, she's been through enough adversity that it's kind of broken her open. And, but I realized in that which was really strange to me that um, I, I actually can start charging for my time, that my time is valuable, that socializing isn't really a valuable thing in many cases for me, and that I'm bringing something to people when they ask me to, to show up it's because they're asking for something that they, it's like they feel some, they feel, they feel something that they are being called to draw to them. And um, it feels, it, it felt like a really weird sort of new agey, um, um, putting myself on a pedestal. So it took me a little bit to get used to that, but, but um, just that, that um, awareness made me understand the, the mechanisms for how to go about receiving money for my time. And um, so I went into the convention with this understanding that there were all these artists, all these people who have a gift and they know they have a gift and they're living in it to, to some degree. And they, and so they also were able to feel um, that there, there might be some answers here that I've, in my time of being quiet that I've come across that um, that feeling of, well, I live in my passion, I'm doing what I love, people admire what I make, but there's something just not, you know, I just, there's something else. And almost being embarrassed to even be thinking that, but to come across somebody who's like taking a step over to that something else just really um, drew a few people to me and I had a really enjoyable time and made some good connections. And Scott, while you were at your, your convention, you ended up telling people about the circles and that was fabulous because they were, they were ready to hear any, any means of getting to the I quit stage. And so you sent a bunch of people to me and um, the circles just became a sustainable thing and something that feeds me and provides some method of healing for others, healing and growth. And meanwhile, I can do uh, my other creative things because I have this this base of uh, support that just seems to continue to be there. And people who, who had circles made in the early stages are coming back because they've, they've worked through that and they want another one because it's just such a tangible tool to work with and they feel, feel what comes from it. And they're having their own um, breakthroughs and changes and I quit moments and um, that that was like um, the I quit felt like it it was going to go into the circle somewhere 
as well. Um, and so it just became this total unfolding. There was no launching of it. It just was word of mouth and a little bit of um, a little bit of social media, but primarily word of mouth, which felt really good because it felt very sincere that someone just heard about it, became curious, and wanted and or or resonated and felt felt that there was something in there for them and um and yeah just having that base of support made all the creations like the stakes just there were no high stakes anymore because it was all an experiment and it was all supported and it's ease and peaceful. Mm. Good. All right. Four minutes for me. <clears throat> so Rita has come back from the oil painters convention and um, just the things that have happened in the last few months after the oil painters convention and my my trip and visiting her and she's come up with a lot more language and a lot more ways of talking about the circles that she creates. It's almost as if she was mentored by them as she created them. And I think that's, that's something that she talks about a lot because this is a more authentic way to learn about your own art, to learn about what happens. It was as if the right resources and the right stories and the right people just landed there at the right times for her through that trust through just creating another circle for another client and then in the, in the quiet times having resources and books and other things about circles come to her so it was during those quiet times too that she learned so much more about some native aspects of creating circles plus some astronomical aspects of circles. Um, she's connected with some astronomers who really enjoy her circles. And um, she's, so in those quiet times, these authentic moments of connection happen where it's as if she's being mentored along the way by the circles that she creates. And um, as it grows, yeah, she is like, created circles for people's pets, circles for people's illnesses, circles for people's family members. Um, her digital circles are taking off a lot because people want something faster. They want something they can print. They want something they can put into all of their digital spaces too. Um, so she's getting a lot of digital requests, people printing them out soon. And then the digital requests just turn into, well, I really want one that's, that I can just sort of touch and feel and see the see the oil pastel right there um, because uh, like I told her that the oil pastels under the halogen lights seem to have this glowing quality like the new halogen lights that we have in our homes if we turn those on and you have one of the circles next to it with the black background it just emits this light it's really incredible so more people are recognizing that um, more people are finding different places to put their circles, like in their cars, in their homes, next to their pet's food, like I did, um, in their bathrooms. It's just, you know, so the stories are coming to Rita as well about where I'm putting my circle, where I'm showing this, where, where I'm finding the healing. And um, she's also learning that this is like also giving her some space to actually do more creations. This is sustainable for her. The circles are mentoring to her and letting her know that her time is very valuable. Her time in connecting with others is valuable and she can be there as a quiet presence with others. And she actually is comfortable now, you know, starting to charge for that as well. Um, not just this traditional, you know, we're going to do a mingler or, or connect on LinkedIn or connect with this and then go to coffee and go to a meetup, which is exhausting. And you, you, so, but things are natural. You know, things come naturally from her creations, 
from the circles, from the people she meets serendipitously, from the people I meet serendipitously. And, um, you know, they, they see that I have, I've pasted one of her circles on one of my, my tarot card boxes. So I printed a few of them, a few of them out and just put them on top of my boxes. And that always asks a question. I don't even have to like force it. So it, it, it creates questions for people like, what is that? That's really cool. That was really quick. Four minutes. Oh, gee, I think you need a t-shirt with your circle on it. Oh, oh, that would be easy to do. Yeah, it would. <laughs>